an intuitive reader for self-empowerment and development, Samantha brings you hindsight, insight, foresight in a weekly one-hour show, reflecting on the past, enhancing the present for a spiritual future, bringing you topics and various guests offering discussion and pathways to empower and enhance your being. Samantha will be staying in SOC Radio Chat for 30 minutes after the show. So join us on site at spiritualistonline.com for this eye-opening and inspiring show each week. Welcome to Hindsight, Insight, Foresight with Samantha Moyer. Enjoy as we inspire the mind, body and spirit from life's past, present and into your bright future. Hi everyone, my name's Sam. Um, I'm going to be the host for today um, on SOP Radio. So my show is called Hindsight, Insight and Foresight with Samantha Moya. Um, I'm super excited. Um, this is my first ever show, so I'm sure um, we'll kind of get through it as I, as I go along and ease into it. Um, I wanted to start, the, start my first ever show by talking about um, intuition and trust. Um, I think because this show is um, more spiritually based and we have a lot of different mediums and um, people talking about their spirituality, that I am super excited to kind of give uh, my thoughts or my opinions and my experience over so that we can um, all kind of interact and engage about it. Um, I will give you a little brief about who I am and what I do. So I'm an intuitive. Um, I do a lot of um, intuitive readings, but I also run a page for warrior women. So it's uh, intuition and trust that I'm going to speak about today um, is pretty much the foundation of everything that I go forward in doing. So um, if you, and I'm open, I've got the chat room open. So if there's anyone listening and they want to kind of interact or ask me any questions, I'm going to open it up to questions so we can kind of go through together. So I'm super excited. Um, so I wanted to kind of start today with the hindsight part of uh, the show and kind of what intuition what intuition really means to everybody and how they use it because I because it's such a strong foundation, I guess we all have it, we all use it. I think some people use it more than others. Um, but for me, it's been really amazing because I've been able to actually integrate that into my work life. So how I would describe intuition is it's that nagging feeling. Like you, everyone that's over in the chat room, um, have you ever, have you had experiences? Um, have you, how do you know what intuition is? I mean, for me, uh, intuition is that knowing. Do you guys get that? Like, do you guys get that knowing that knowing feeling where you just kind of know something, whether it's good or bad or just depending on how you feel, you have that knowing. Before your mental kind of stuff gets taken in or your ego, your intuition is that nagging feeling that keeps saying, you know, this is right for you, this is wrong, you should be interacting with this person or you shouldn't. Um, a couple of examples of the times that I've um, used intuition um, and where it's really worked for me when you really sit down and listen to it is um, when I was driving home one day from where I lived and um, I had that nagging feeling, I'm going to turn around and drive probably 15 minutes out of my way to get home and um, and for absolutely no visual reason um, as to why I would why I would be choosing to do that. I just had that feeling. Um, and I ended up turning around, going completely the wrong direction, went the wrong way home. I get home, turn the news on, and there has been an accident on the major road in and out of, of where I live. So I was like, wow, that's really amazing because if not, I would have been stuck behind, you know, trucks and I could have been there all all afternoon. So it was just, and I also have a few other things that help me on the daily. Um, but I also, um, I also um, leave my straighteners on a lot. Um, and I will be driving out my driveway and my intuition will kick in being like, rah, 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 time to turn around um, and 
head back and go and turn it off because um, if I didn't have that going, I'd probably burn my house down because I keep leaving the straighteners on. So for everyone in the chat room that's um, that's uh, listening in, I would love to hear if you have any stories of when that's worked for you because I think the more we listen to it, the more aware um, we are kind of going forward or the more we can kind of – and that kind of leads into that trust as well. Um, I – I think when, once you can trust that intuition and once you can really, um, once you can listen and once you understand what's going on and what that voice, and I am going to go into that a little bit more about how I was able to differentiate between what was intuition and what was just my ego and my, um, you know, mind kind of taking over. But I find it extremely interesting when um, we talk about people and how they use their intuition. I've had people with my business um, not even understanding what intuition is. So it's it's really exciting, um, really exciting to kind of hear how everyone's take is um, on on what they know. Like how what what do you feel for everyone in the chat room? What do you feel when your intuition is going off like a an alarm bell? Do you get the butterflies in the stomach? Do you get the shaky hands or do you get that cold rush that runs through your body? What what kind of signs do you have to say, you know, intuition is on high alert telling you, you know, you know something good is coming or something bad is coming and that you need to um, use it more because the more we kind of step into our spirituality and the more we start listening to ourselves and what our our connection is with ourselves, the stronger that intuition starts to become. Uh, The way I kind of explain it to a lot of my clients is if you were to think about, um, and as Fellini said, is it Fellini? Am I saying that Um, in the chat room? Intuition and ego. So, You know, for intuition and ego and how they go um, hand in hand but also are two kind of separate entities with that as well is is how you – your mind will probably explain the risk factor. Your mind will always go into the how you're going to do something. Your mind will always try and piece together and and join the dots together, whereas I think intuition is like that – Pick your first thought. Is that good or bad? Go. Is that is that um, uh, is that the right thing for you? Yes or no? Is that you know? Are you going to go left or right? It's kind of that first because you know. It's it's really hard to explain that feeling of just knowing something. But you know, I know that my name is Sam, so I don't really have to doubt that. And that's kind of how my intuition works for me. So I really love. Um, I really love hearing how everyone's um, how, how everyone's experiences go with using that. Um, what else did I want to talk about with that? Yeah, I just want to hear how everyone really how everyone goes forward with that, how they use their intuition, how they how how it's and from a past point of view and from that hindsight point of view, have you ever? Um, had something happen and you went against your own intuition and then it turns around and you go oh I knew that was going to happen like that like somewhere in me knew that that was the wrong thing to do have you had that kind of almost negative reinforcement about what happens when you don't listen to it um I'm just going to read one of the comments from Jody. um I'd and there Yeah, um, I'm just going into the chat room, so I'm seeing some good um, some good co- comments in there um, about, you know, I think I think we tend to see our intuition as um, something that only warns us about maybe bad things. You know, if we meet somebody that we're not uh, that it maybe isn't too friendly or hasn't got the best intention for us, um, our, we tend to listen to our intuition. Um, I know as a as a female, I've used that many a times. If I've been walking anywhere, or um, if you you know if you if you're walking somewhere, as an example, and this has kind of happened to me. If you're walking, and this is how I explain intuition, if you're walking down a dark alleyway and you can't hear 
the person behind you and you can't see them, how do you – but you know that there's someone there. Like can you explain what that is? And I pretty much put that down to your intuition is picking up that there's something – unsafe happening or there's some bad energy or there's some bad intention going on behind you um you know and and that that soul intuition of yours is kind of going crazy because it's going hey you're in trouble you know that's not your your ego or your senses telling you that's that inner feeling or you know if you have woken up um in the middle of the night and you've had that oh, I've got to check something or I've got to I've got to go and have a look at something that's not really your senses or that kind of physical uh, body telling you something that's you know that's your soul kind of and your intuition kind of being like giving you the knock on the knock on the the door of saying come on now time to time to be listening this is the only way that I can get through so I personally have had to learn the hard way about how I <laughs> about all the uh, all the punishment and all the suffering that I've had to go through to really be able to connect up with my intuition and I and I feel like if I don't listen I trip or something happens or a situation will snowball and then I kind of sit back after a, a bit of a struggle or a bit of a a bit of a hard situation and went my goodness if only I had listened to what I was thinking in the beginning so I think it's so important that we use this hindsight segment about really taking a good hard look at where our intuition has come from and why why it's there and how it's guided us from you know from being a child all the way up into where we are today um, our intuition as children kind of and I have young children I watch them um, I watch them use that in in a really in a really um, instinctive and intuitive way for them is when they don't feel it they just don't do it and they and when they want to do something they kind of know what option that they would do or you know how many of us that have children <clears throat> will watch them do something and we kind of go oh you're going to hurt yourself but they go at it fearlessly because they kind of have that knowing that they're going to be um, that they're going to be safe um, so I, I watch it with them and because it's not really so much trained out of them or to have that fear factor which I kind of think really dampens down that level of intuition whereas from a child point of view they really do step it up and and they you know because they're so fearless they kind of listen to what their gut is telling them at all times and they you know they're hungry they scream for it if they want something they you know if if they they can sense when their mother when their eyes are closed they can intuitively sense when their mother is walking out of a room and you know wake up crying if they they can tell when their their mum has walked back into a room so it's amazing how as we get older all the ego stuff kind of gets away from it so i think from a hindsight point of view like kind of in this segment of um the show um is there things that you have reflected on that have made you um, made you look back and go, wow, I should have really listened there. I should have have been a little bit more trusting that I already knew the answer. Um, and I'm sure there's many times where there's been situations that have happened to other people, and you've kind of intuitively know how it's going to play out or how it's going to go. Um, and I think that we need to be introducing that into ourselves more and actually be using that as our first point of call and making our decisions about how we how we feel about it, how our soul feels about it, because our mind will always try and keep us safe. So our ego is always going to keep us because that's what it's there for. It's there to, um, it's there to keep us safe. It's there to make sure that we're not risking our lives or we're not risking relationships and things like that. So it's really, really amazing to. Um, to be able to counterbalance the ego with more intuition. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear everyone's um, stories. Does anybody have any questions um, about that? Is there anyone in the chat room that wants to um, go through and, and ask some questions? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to hear if there's ever been any situations or there's been anything that... Um, that you, and if you're not in the chat room and you're tuning in right now, 
um, just as a, as a little reminder, you can go over to Spiritualist Online um, and so spiritualistonline.com and head over to the chat room. It's the SOP radio chat. Um, and jump on in and, you know, if you've heard the first part of the show and you've got any questions or examples, I'm, you know, looking forward to hearing from everybody. Um, and so kind of going um, further into the show and about the insight kind of segment, and that's where I kind of want to segue into, is, um, you know, having the trust, like intuition and being able to trust your intuition. How does that how does that work in our everyday lives? Because I think trust is something that we naturally want to do. We want to trust ourselves. We want to trust the people that are around us. But it's also one of those areas that once it's, you know, once it's been broken or once it's been, um, once it's, you know, once there's been some um, tear in that in that trust foundation, it's, it can be really hard to kind of mend that up and, and get it back to where we, we want it to go. So, trusting in this insight kind of part of this segment I wanted to talk about how important it is to trust that intuition how important it is to trust the universal process that if you were to see your intuition as your soul speaking to you um, that nothing is going to have your best interests first and foremost than yourself and your own soul um, JT Devitt trust is good but discernment is better um, see I think trust um, it's it's not about like and even with trust I think uh, we all get a little bit confused about putting our trust in other people as opposed to trusting ourselves so like trusting your own intuition is going well I trust the process so that even if it's if this situation is hard that I I trust that I will be able to get out of it because I, you know, trust that I have the strength to be able to get me through. I, I trust that, you know, my intuition is going to lead me to where I need to go and to keep me safe. Um, I, I really, really um, found that difficult kind of go like growing up and being able to trust my own judgment, trust my own, um, uh, choices and my own decisions so it kind of made me a fence sitter for a very short time in my life I've never been someone that's kind of um, indecisive but I did sit on the fence being a bit more concerned about what to do and and with my practice in work and about being like okay I'm the leader of my life I make my choices I have to live with the consequences I'm just going to go in in how I how I feel about it um, yeah, it's been absolutely phenomenal to really see how the more the more I trust, the more yeses I'm getting, the more opportunities that I'm getting, the more I lead by intuition about what's right for me and how I feel as opposed to what the outcome may look like or how my ego is going to try and manoeuvre it to make it sit well, the more things seem to be falling into place and, um I'm just reading one of the comments. Oh, absolutely. So to, is it JT Devitt? I hope I'm saying your name right in the chat room. Uh, one of the comments is different kinds of trust. That type of trust, um, of trust of self is so vitally important. Totally, absolutely agreed. Um, I think if we can't trust ourselves and trust our own judgment and trust what we're doing, or what we're laying out, I don't think that that kind of snowball affects onto anybody else being able to trust us because once we know what we're doing, it kind of leaves no room for, for self-manipulation or manipulation from others because we are so decisive in our own choices. So that trust has to definitely be something, absolutely agree, um, JT, that's, yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and... And where, and I, I speak to a lot of my clients who I do readings with, and they seem to come up when they do come up with a lot of um, issues or somewhere. It's because they haven't trusted, and they haven't trusted their own intuition. Um, I know for me, when I have gone for a job, I'll use an example of myself. 
I went for a job and, you know, intuitively I wasn't feeling it. Like I really, really wasn't feeling it. I wasn't that keen on the person who was interviewing me. I wasn't really that keen on their values. Um, I wasn't really that keen on how that would affect my family dynamic with the hours. Um, So I went against my better judgment and my intuition and I decided that I would take it because my ego was telling me, okay, so this is why we're having to do it and this is how and this is how we're going to get from point A to point B quickly, even though my gut instinct was blaring saying, no, 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 this is not right for you, this doesn't work for you, it's not the right choice and I went against it and I got, uh, I got pretty well reprimanded for that from day one because normally when I start a new job you, you're pretty um, excited and you're pretty uh, much looking forward to creating a new team dynamic and from day one I found it an absolute struggle to be there. I found it a struggle to interact. I found it a struggle to find my groove with things. I found it a struggle to uh, be my authentic self. I second guessed myself. I felt uneasy in that dynamic. I just didn't feel the energetic flow. So everything about me from the ground up completely um, was turned on its head. Um, until I pretty much resigned, you know, nearly a year later um, and knew that it was just time wasted and I was kicking myself that I didn't take the opportunity to start my business then as I did after I had resigned. So I, I felt like I had wasted a year not listening to my intuition and following the dream that I'm doing now um, instead of listening to my ego who was kind of micromanaging my thought processes even though I had put my intuition on a back burner. I hope that makes sense because I know what I'm trying to convey. Um, But I just think it's so once you have that trust and that you can never go wrong. uh, I'm just – oh, and there's a comment come through um, from Evergreen Q. I did exactly the same thing with uh, with a job last year. Totally, totally. And you kind of know instantly, right? Like you know instantly that, you know, you're going against the grain. You know it doesn't fit. You know it doesn't feel right. But your your ego is going, okay, you want to get from point A to point B quickly. This is the outcome we're trying to achieve. We're not, the ego is not going to make it comfortable or going to be the right for you to soar and really um, thrive in your life. It's just going to get you to where you need to where you need to go. So, yeah, your intuition is like, hey, we can work with that, with your ego, but we're going to find a better one that makes you feel more centred and more, you know, in that place. So definitely trust your intuition every time and trust the process, I think, for kind of that insight tip. Um, trust that process, you know, trust that even if it's uncomfortable, your soul and your intuition is never going to lead you to harm. It might lead you to uncomfortability. It might lead you to a learning lesson that might not feel great at the time, but for the greater good, your intuition is always going to have your best interest at heart. So sometimes we can choose a scenario and it feels really great and then we get put off by that choice because in maybe three, four, five, six weeks' time, it doesn't work as well or it doesn't, it has a different feel. And that's us maybe stepping into some uncomfortability because your intuition has led you through this path because there's a, a lesson for you to learn. So it's not like your intuition has been wrong, it's leading you to a place where you're about to step into the new part of you and be able to take on a lesson that you can handle to be able to step up into a new um, soulful and whole version of yourself in an environment or in a situation that energetically you can handle. So it's like our intuition is always on point. Our intuition is always, if you are listening to it, it will put you in uncomfortable positions sometimes, but that is because your intuition is saying, you're going to need this lesson probably in a year from now, probably in six months from now, maybe in a couple of weeks, or you need to meet this person who might make you feel uncomfortable with their opinions or their, you know, their views, 
but it's actually going to give you some insight to a situation that's going to happen in a couple of weeks' time. This is a valuable part for you. So your intuition is still guiding you and doing the right thing for you, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not going to be a breeze every time that you listen to your intuition, but it's not suppo- life isn't supposed to be about that anyway, as you will probably know. Um, let me just see what's going on in the chat room real quick. I'm seeing some really, really positive feedback. I love it, guys. I love it. So any feedback or any, you know, any questions or any um, scenarios when we um, go to a promo break shortly, I'll kind of go through. um, And if you have any questions, I can um, message you back as well. Um, But... I mean, with the and, and this is the thing I love about um, SOP Radio and uh, Spiritualist Online. We all have different ways and different points in how we view our intuition and how we how we view our trust and how we use it and how we feel it and and how it affects our everyday life. Um, and that's amazing too because there's always going to be someone who who can inspire you or understand you and and this is what this group of of people and this is what this community is based around is about really trying to not just knowing or talking about things like intuition but I really want to get to like the crux of it I really want to get to the the nitty-gritty of why people are afraid of following their own intuition has there been um times that you know, you've gone against it because I could probably talk you around about how that is, how that's helped you out or, or, you know, in any situations like that, I think, I think we know when our intuition has worked when we haven't used it, but I think we kind of overlook when our intuition has worked in a good way and how that's kind of kept us safe. Like I was saying about that driving the wrong way home so I could get there and it kept me safe or, you know, walking you know if I meet a stranger that doesn't feel right and I kind of move away from them or know that I need to end that conversation or if you do online work or you meet people in your home or something and you speak to them on the phone and your intuition instantly tells you that this is not a a a person for you to be around you listen to it that's like a safety thing as well or even your children even having your children um that that you know sometimes we get that intuitive <gasps> my children there's something wrong with them or there's something you know there's something not right with them um and you intuitively know that you need to pick up the phone and call them or check on them and I've actually had a uh had a super mum moment with that uh when my child was small he was sitting in a high chair um we're going to go to break shortly so I'll wrap this story up quickly but um, I, my son was sitting in a high chair, um, and I was hanging washing out and he's always kind of sat in there. He was kind of sitting near the back door. Um, and I had my back to him and I had a screaming, nagging feeling to run inside and get him. And just as I kind of ran inside, he was just about to topple out of this high chair, which he'd never done. He'd never tried to stand up. But if I hadn't have listened to that nagging feeling and dropped what I was doing, it could have been quite dangerous. So, I think it's so, so, so important that we we really make that our forefront um, in how we go into any decisions and who we meet, jobs, how we feel about things. If it means about moving, it means about, you know, going for job promotions. So I absolutely love it when I hear the stories of people going, I listened, it was correct, and my goodness, was it rewarding. It couldn't, you know, my mind probably wouldn't have let me do that, but I went with it anyway. And it's like, wow, I love that. Um, there's just a comment here from Jody. Ego will say to look at the experience and judge it. Trust says exactly what James just said. Trust the only way to know that you are on your part. Yeah, totally, totally. Ego will always just find your right way to do it. It doesn't. It, it's not so. It's not so worried about how you feel. It's about doing risk management and going. You want point A to point B. I can get you there. Intuition's going. I can get. Yep. I like your plan. But we're just going to go around it this way. Same kind of thing, but going around it. So I love that. But we're going to go to break in three minutes. So I just want to. Um, do a little bit of a plug for my own page and my own um, 
and my own website. Um, so if you want to hear any more from me or you want to um, keep in contact and stay updated with everything that's going on with me, you can head over to my Facebook page, which is uh, Samantha, which my business page is Samantha Moya Warrior Women. Um, or you can have a, a head over to my website and um, kind of see all the packages and, and um, courses that I run uh, personally as well, which is at www.samanthamoya.com. Um, and if you haven't already, which I'm sure if you're already in the chat room have, but if not, if you head over to uh, spiritualistonline.com and you can um, listen back to any other episodes um, and kind of interact and get involved in the chat rooms and all the different areas that um, Spiritualist Online has got going on. Or you can head over to the SOC Radio page on Facebook because if you're ever interested in holding a hosting spot, you can contact Julie or Tracy and I can speak from experience that they're absolutely brilliant when it comes to um, getting you involved and everything like that and really um, inclusive and, and helpful. So head over there or if you can't jump into the comment section, you can head over to tunein.com forward slash sock radio and search any other you know previous shows or this one um to kind of hear any you know when it goes live so i might leave it there and we'll go to break and then we'll come back and i'm going to open it up with a few more questions so um if i can head that over to you tracy um to uh go to break that would be awesome spiritualistsonline.com Online since 2002, teaching all aspects of personal and spiritual development. Free to all with audio video chat rooms, members forums, and soft radio live shows on site. The Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, a global oasis for spiritual awareness, development, attainment, imparting knowledge, thoughts, ideas to inspire. One site linking a whole network of spiritually informative, educational and interactive services, encompassing every faith, path, walk, religion as one. Jenny Lee brings you spiritual insights, covering various topics from remote viewing to her upcoming book launch. Check it all out on our schedule live in the SOC Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at Tune in.com and search for Sock Radio. Beyond the Veil with Terry Oz. Check it out first Monday, monthly, 2 p.m. UK time. Terry shares her experiences and love of spiritual communication with those from Beyond the Veil. Join us live in the Sock Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tuneIn.com and search for Sock Radio. Spirit Weavers with Jody White Wolf Morrison. A weekly one hour radio show, Thursdays, 8 pm UK time, featuring those who are dedicated to living their spirituality and exploring how that is woven into their everyday lives through their work, practices, and beliefs. Various SOC members from Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum sharing their abilities, knowledge, and more. Dates and times will vary. Live in the SOC Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for SOC Radio. Spiritualist Open Circle Forum Panel Show The liveliest spiritual chat show online. The Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Chat Show with hosts, guest speakers and panellists discussing and challenging all areas of spiritual thought, ability, knowledge and more. Ever wanted to voice your thoughts and help set standards within the field? Confront those who bring the work down or simply share your ideas and help bring spirits work into the light of day and give spiritualism the recognition of all as a true faith and way of life? Then this is the show for you. Every last Friday of the month, 10 p.m. UK time. Join the team. You're back. Welcome back, everyone. Um, so I forgot to say um, earlier before the promos that I will also – so I'm going to be doing my show uh, once a 
month um, and just kind of doing these uh, little chats. Um, but I'm also going to be on the fourth Wednesday of every month. I'm going to be just live in the chat room. So if there's any kind of questions on the topics that we've kind of talked about or, you know, any 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 type of questions really, I'm going to kind of be in there and, and answering kind of like a Q&A. So I'm pretty excited about that because just to be able to kind of interact um, as the as the questions and the comments kind of roll in, I, I just think that would be amazing to connect with with you all um, as as the kind of shows are going on and as I'm kind of going through. So I wanted to come back and maybe talk about so you know with hindsight, insight, and foresight, I kind of um, wanted to go in and start talking about so the foresight section that I wanted to um, wanted to talk about, and that was um, that was you know, kind of going forward, um, I do a lot of programs in my own work around manifesting. And I think a lot about manifesting is that base that I've just been talking about, about that trust and that intuition. So kind of going forward. Um, and when we look at our future, um, is having that trust and that, and that, uh, intuitive, um, understanding and knowing, um, going, you know, when we make our plans, how does everyone, how does everyone feel about like when, when they're making plans and going forward intuitively, like when you land on a lightning bolt moment and you intuitively go, I can totally see that happening for myself, or I can totally feel like that's the right way to go. And then when we go to manifest or we go to kind of put it out there, um, our trust or our, you know, universal trust, I guess, tends tends to get um, tested. So because I was saying I do a lot of work with people about manifesting and about, um, you know, the programs about, you know, how to kind of create our own reality that we want, um, I think as soon as that trust gets wavered or that intuition um, gets kind of bombarded with a brick wall or a hurdle, it gets really – it gets really um, – you know, that, I think that's where that, that disrepair comes in because, um, you know, we can't really we can't really go forward once we have that hurdle. So I think the trust um, is so important when we're looking from a going forward point of view because one of the key fundamentals of trusting your intuition is, as I was saying earlier, about accepting that there will be challenges, that your intuition is going to lead you to challenges because it's actually a good thing. Like you will be challenged to be a better person. And I was talking about this concept with one of my clients today about if we're waiting for the perfect time or the perfect way of things changing, um, then we're trying to be in control of it. And if we're in control of it, we're still in a comfort zone. And if we're still in a comfort zone, then we're not really um, being uncomfortable, which means we're not really learning. And it kind of go, does that make sense? Like it kind of goes in that circle. So we're still kind of in control, staying in comfort, waiting for the perfect time. And it kind of goes in circles where your intuition is going, this is the correct path for you. It's going to be a bit of a struggle or you're going to have a bit of uncomfortability. But the fact that you're uncomfortable means that you're actually stepping outside your comfort zone and you're growing into that new energetic being of yourself or that new understanding and that new connection to yourself and the universe and your spirituality. So, you know, waiting for perfect timing or waiting for the right, you know, opportunity to come along or kind of holding back is actually another way of us controlling how and when, which actually comes down to ego. I know that sounds like a totally, you know, far out concept, but it's like the more we're being pushed, and the more uncomfortable that we are, the only thing that we can control in those uncomfortable moments is the trust that our intuition is leading us to where we need to go every time. Like there is no doubt ever your intuition is never going to put you into a place that you will be, you know, might make you uncomfortable, but it's not going to put you somewhere that you're not safe. It's not going to put you somewhere where you're going to be in danger. It's it's going to put you somewhere where it's going to go, okay, well, you've lived in this little comfort zone. Trust me, your intuition talking, going, trust me, I got you, I've got your back, but you're going to have to face this 
and this is your hurdle. And once you get past this, in a year time, a year's time when, when a situation pops up, you're going to need this uncomfortability to be as a direct reference point going forward. So you might think when you hit that hurdle, damn, my intuition's way off. I have no idea what's, you know, why I would choose this because it felt so right at the time and now I feel like it's wrong and that's more the ego and, and uncomfortability. So I think in general practice um, and, and kind of going forward to be able to manifest and to be able to trust the process and be able to kind of step into that new energetic realm that we want to go in, we have to be able to really use our intuition as like our number one tool about how we manoeuvre ourselves through our, through our life. Um, absolutely number one. If you can trust yourself, you can trust anything because we're always going to have our ego nagging at us, telling our pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses and, and good and bad and risk evaluation. If you can trust every time that your intuition is going to tell you the right thing, you'll never you'll – never, not be in a situation that you can't get yourself through and over and above. You've just got to be willing to be uncomfortable to get there. But, you know, you think of any kind of situation that you can look back on in your past and think about when your intuition was on point and you got through a hurdle and then you look back a year later and went, far out, I knew that I could get through it. But at the time, not really. And now that I look back, holy, I'm just on point. Like it was just, you know, thank God I went through that um, that situation because I never would have led on to this and I never would have got on to that. And, you know, that opened up this door and, and me having that really shitty um, situation led me to meeting this person and or met the love of my life when we were in an interview for a really bad job and I didn't like the job but I met the love of my life there. Your intuition's leading you to every single point. So it kind of leads me to my next kind of question and I want to um, kind of put it out to you all. What do we do to enhance that, right? So I'm sitting here rambling on about how important it is, but what are we doing on a day-to-day to actually listen? Or what can we do to test it? Or what kind of games can we do to enhance it and strengthen it? So... I do this a lot with my clients about um, about ways that we can kind of almost play play games. Um, I used to do a game on the phone with one of my best friends, and we used to sit um, up at night when we couldn't sleep, and we used to play um, intuition games. So we would try and and um, pick a number with each other, and we would sit there and go, okay, so pick a number between one and ten, and then. So we do that in our head and then we would say, okay, intuitively I kind of want to know um, what the other person has picked. So we every time we were only one number out from each one. So then we would go 1 to 10. Then we would go 1 to 20. Then we would go to 1 to 50. Then we would go to 1 to 100. And we would be pretty much, when we really listened to that first number that popped up into our head, we were pretty much a number or two out. Or you can play other games like um, going into a, uh, the bank and there being six different tellers and you kind of sit there and go, I know which one is going to serve me. And you would be able to intuitively think about, have a quick look and scan and go, okay, so which one's going to serve me, right? So you can play all these games or, you know, you see other Facebook games. I think uh, Jody's just written in, I play um, Facebook arcade, arcade game where I have to make choices. I train my intuition by asking what choice and then see what happens. Totally, Jody, totally. Because, you know, people just think that it is um, – People just think that it uh, is, um, you know, like a luck thing or people saying that it's, you know, a lucky guess. But, you know, there's a lot of Facebook groups where they take a photo of something in their hand and they go, intuitively, guess what's in my hand. Now, I mean, think of everything that you can fit in the palm of your hand and nine times out of ten, if it's not what's in that hand, it is still um, not far off. So it's like if you can start playing these little games when you're driving in your car, um, pick when the light is going to go red or pick when it's going to go green 
or, you know, have those thoughts about um, think about a person and think about when they're going to call you. It's about really testing that, you know, if I get a flash of someone in my mind, I literally just pick the phone up and call them going, thinking of you, I need to call you. And nine times out of 10 with them, there's something going on with them and they're kind of putting it out there that they need a hand with something. I do it in, I'm very connected with my mum. So I, nine, you know, all the time, I will be texting her and halfway through me about to send a text, she would have intuitively known I was thinking of her or about to message her and she would pick up the phone and call me and vice versa. So I'm sure there's like plenty of times where that has happened and these are ways that you can kind of train to start trusting and start to actually to visually see how you're using it on an everyday or, you know, what, you know, what time something's going to happen or you can, you know, there's, there's plenty of games. And I'm sure if you went on Google and just put in like intuitive fun games that you can, you can play, definitely can kind of start playing them, start playing them with your friends over the phone, start, um, start thinking about, um, you know, when, when a certain thing's going to come on or when, you know, even if you're scrolling your newsfeed being like, okay, I'm going to refresh it and, Think of a person that you think is going to be the, the, you know, not not by ego, but actually thinking about who's going to be the first one that pop up. And the more that you can kind of hone in on those on those games, the easier and and more aware you're going to be to use that as your first choice. Because as they start, you know, going through and using it, it will it it will start working all the time. So I love those games, and I you know, and there's a stack of them out there on Google that you can use. Um, uh, Evergreen Q on the uh, chat room has said, I used to do that with a friend, would focus on him for two hours when I was in college and at the end of the two hours he would always he would always call me and say, stop that. That is awesome. I love that. I love that because it's like when you're walking around thinking of someone and then they call you and they're and be like, he must have been reading my mind. It's kind of that, you know, you kind of put it out there that um, I'm going to, you know, you know when you go for a job interview and you intuitively know that it's yours? Like you may not even be super experienced, but all the energetic flow and all all your, you know, energies are on fire. Like they're, they're telling you this is the right way, this is the right way. And you walk out of it going, you know what, I might not have been experienced as the 12 other people that went in, but I know it's mine. Like that job is mine. That's not even in the hopefulness. You just know that you're going to be getting a call or you know that that was just the perfect thing. So it's the more you can use it. And also one of those other ways of really using it is um, meditate. And I myself find meditating very, very, very hard because I have young children. I My brain is constantly on ding, 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 like on fire all the time. So I find it very, very hard to actually sit and focus so my way of quote unquote meditating is to actually um, is to actually put headphones in and just listen to music, and that's where my body goes on autopilot and my brain can, can just kind of centre. I mean, it's probably not safe to say this, but you know how sometimes you're driving and you kind of go on autopilot and it and it just kind of goes away. Being able to kind of go in that zone is when a lot of your intuitive thoughts will come in because your ego is not thinking, your obligations aren't waning in on you, you're not, you know, having anxiety about what the future is going to hold, you're not having stress about what's to come to you, you just mind. So whichever way, if that's walking or if that's actually sitting down quietly and meditating, if that's, um, you know, putting your headphones in or or swimming. I mean, I know a lot of people kind of go into that meditative state when they're swimming because all they're doing is is staring in that line. But it's really about if you can free that mind space up about really kind of pushing aside all the things that your ego is telling you that is important, like bills and, you know, what's going to be for dinner and all the jobs that you've got or deadlines or, you know, just more so the obligations and things on the grand scheme of life aren't that important. If you can make that that headspace room, all your intuitive thoughts and understandings and guidance and questions and answers will actually start flooding you. That's why people that um, 
start to really make that connection as well um, going into the, and, and using that as that foresight going forward is about, okay, even if you have to do a meditation five minutes before you go to sleep, you'll probably find you'll have some insane dreams because they will be um, – um, they'll be kind of going for like your intuition will be like, okay, so your head's too busy during the day. I'm going to give you your warning shots and I'm going to give you your understanding in your dreams. Like I'm going to throw that out to the um, chat room. Is that something that happens to you? Are you really flat out during the day that you can't, you can't get a spare five minutes to think for yourself? So, um your dreams just go crazy and they're like oh it's literal it's metaphorical it's but you wake up in the morning going okay I'm getting the general gist of where I'm going here um JT I very rarely ever remember dreams can't even uh can't even re- last time I remembered a dream okay so you probably JT probably get a lot of stuff during the day then like you're probably on point because I find a lot of people that get those full-on dreams are the ones that haven't got really the headspace to to be able to really hear it during during the day because they don't have that that quiet or that quiet mind space yeah right thank you JT yes I do beautiful um that they they have that those dreams because I mean it's like with me I have like a dream journal where I wake up and like write down my main points Because going forward um, and being able to manifest what I want, sometimes those lightning bolt ideas for me only come in my dreams or a different perspective only comes in my dreams. So if, if you guys are to take anything away from this show today is being first and foremost, trust yourself. And especially when things get hard, that trusting is um, always you know, the, even in the uncomfortability, even in the hard times, even in what you think is rough, it's your intuition is probably, if you've been saying yes to your intuition and following it, that uncomfortability is actually just that little hurdle that you need to get over before the next amazing reward comes to you. No sacrifice or no no um, challenge is a challenge without that sense of reward and that um, and that kind of pat on the back afterwards. I mean, you can't feel the strength of climbing a mountain if every every place that you ever walked was flat. It's got to be tough. It's got to be a challenge. It's got to be you pushing hard. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be taking anything from the show, trust the process. Use your intuition. Um, use your intuition to really go. Um, forward with it um and and also so using your intuition using trust and going forward make the time to meditate make the time to have that clear headspace because if you are having trouble really hearing it or understanding or being able to um identify your intuition really find a way you know that you can have that quiet headspace to identify and see what those intuitive um, responses and thoughts are because everything else from the things that I'm going to talk to are going to come back to this intuition being, um, you know, the centre point. Um, I just want to remind everyone again that I'm pretty excited. So I'm doing this this radio show now, but in two weeks' time, so that will be the fourth um, Wednesday of May, the 31st, 2 p.m., I'm going to be back in this chat room just answering questions. So if there's anything on this show that you take away uh, within the next two weeks up until the 31st, bring it to me. I'm happy to kind of engage and bounce ideas off you and be able to talk about it and we'll we'll kind of do the back and forth because I would really like to open up that space to um, have a chat with everyone and be able to, you know, answer any questions and hear what your experiences are. I know like as we were talking about that intuitive space, even being able to understand what your signs and synchronicity um, are kind of coming your way and how you can identify them. So um, super excited to be able to do that. So make sure, put it in your calendars, set a reminder, write the questions down, 
because I'm super stoked to kind of just let's just bounce those ideas off one another and and I want to get your point of view I want you you know I want to give you my point of view I want to I want to see if you've done any of those games and if it you know from from now up until the 31st I want to hear the journey about that so let's use that space to really kind of go back and forward and be able to really connect um, on that more intuitive level so I'm super stoked about that as well um, I just want to plug again my own um, my own website and my own um, business page. So if um, so, I run my page for Warrior Women. So my uh, packages um, are predominantly for women, and that's using that intuitive space and confidence and personal power. So you can head over to my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Samantha Moyer Warrior Women or head over to my website which is uh, samanthamoyer.com um, and if you haven't already uh, please go over and register or um, subscribe to spiritualistonline.com um, and you can hear you know and there's like a huge network of people um, in different areas and different um, walks of life that you can connect with. So if, if you've got a question, I'm sure there's someone within that network of um, spiritualists that can answer it for you or there's, you know, different ventures and charity events and different um, events coming up that everyone can kind of um, get involved in. Um, and if you are not already a uh, follower of Sock Radio, please head over to the Facebook um, Sock Radio um, page um, and have a chat with Julie or Tracy or I, I'm pretty sure Colin sees that as well um, and you guys can go in there and you know make the connections if you want to be a host or you want to catch up on any encores they share everything there um, and there's also a YouTube um, which I don't have the link and I'm hoping um, if there's a generic one, maybe Tracy, I'll ask her afterwards, maybe to share it in the chat room. We can go over and watch all previous um, episodes from other hosts. Um, and I'm just thinking if there's anybody that I missed out. Also, yeah, and if there's any other live events, make sure that you go to, you know, if you're out and about and busy, chuck your headphones in um, or, you know, you know, put it live on your phone and go to um, tunein.com forward slash sock radio and you can search all the other um, all the other shows that are on. Um, I'm super excited about how this first show went and um, loving the feedback, loving the engagement. Um, I'm going to stay on for probably another um, half an hour afterwards. So if there is any questions um, or there is anything um, that you weren't able to kind of comment in while the show was running, please start hammering the questions on. I'm going to stay in for an extra half an hour um, to answer them um, and to kind of go through anything or summarise anything that I've talked about. Um, hmm, I think that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I might do a quick, If there is, is there any questions? Anyone in the um, chat room have any questions or have any feedback I uh, would love to hear them you can start running through now because I'm going to kind of go through in the next uh, four to five minutes and I will start answering so I love it um, and I will speak to you all um, I will speak to you all in the chat room and if not I will be back there in two weeks I'm super stoked about that as well um, and head over to my Facebook page and stay connected because I do a lot of live videos um, I'm going to be doing this once a month, so every second, every second Wednesday of the month, 2 p.m. Eastern Australian Standard Time, because I'm uh, a Brisbane chick, um, I will, I will uh, be on here. So, I mean, hit me up with your topics as well. Like from today, if there's something that's led on to something else, I'm happy to, you know, next month on the live show be able to go through and. Um, talk a little bit more about that and, you know, compile some, you know, some questions from this show or, some, you know, experiences or anything, you know, hit me up with some some comments, add it all in and, you know, we can expand from here because I'm, you know, the whole show for me is about actually engaging with you guys. So super stoked. Can't wait. Thanks for listening to Samantha Moyer and Hindsight, Insight, Foresight. Join us again next week for more ideas, thoughts and inspirations to guide you in today's busy life for a beautiful, enhanced future right here on SOC Radio.